Hello, my fellow crafters, and I hope you're doing well today. I had a little bit of inspiration this morning, and surprisingly, an idea that we've been toying around with pretty much since last night um, kindly had its aha moment this morning. So rather than having to spend a couple weeks or so plotting out how to make this happen, I woke up and suddenly it hit me what I want to do. Now, we're working on this pretty big forest terrain, outdoor terrain scape for our campaign. And uh, we'll show that to you in another video. But as part of it, David asked if I could make a couple of hedgerows for him. And I'm sitting there thinking like, yeah, I can make a few. That's not a problem, no big deal. Um, and then I asked him, well, do you want to have a couple that are sort of modular? They can shift around and reshape themselves if you want them to. And he was definitely for that idea. So of course I opened my mouth, came up with this idea, and I had no idea how to do it. I'm happy to announce that I actually came up with something and it worked. Um, so this video is going to show you how to make my magic hedge. And you're going to like this. This is not a caterpillar. This is my hedge. Hedge. This is the bottom of it. Mm, get an idea where it's going here. And what it does is these lovely things like right angles. You can just arc it. See, look at that makes a nice little curvature. You can also get a couple right angles going. Look at this. Ah! It actually works and it sits nice and level on your scapes. There's no issue. It doesn't wobble. It doesn't fall over. And um, you don't get big gaps or anything. So I'm super, super pleased, super, super happy with this. As you can tell, I'm excited. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you in this video how to make my lovely little magic hedge. So stay tuned, uh, take a look. You definitely want to have a notebook for this because there are a few little tips that I'm going to give you that, you know, might be helpful to have on hand after the fact. So take a look as always. Thanks for watching. All right, so to streamline this a little bit, I've already done some prep work. I've taken just some foam core from foam board. Um, rough size, let's say that this is about three quarters of an inch by half an inch type of a measurement. And um, I've cut out 13 of these. And then all you need to do to prep these, to finish them off really, is you take a bamboo skewer and just pop a little hole in the center like so. And then what you're gonna wanna do is Take a pipe cleaner. Um, we have these heavy duty ones, so they're kind of like that chenille feeling type of fabric. Um, and if you don't know what that is, it just means they're super duper soft. And I believe you find these at like hardware stores. I haven't seen these in craft stores, so hardware store. Um, this one is about five inches in length. Um, so what you do is you basically start threading this foam core onto the pipe cleaner. And as you get to the end, just fold up the pipe cleaner just to act as a nice little stop. And then you thread all of these on. I didn't give them a huge gap in between. I kind of just used my pinky as a spacer, okay? So what you wanna do is get all of your 13 little rectangles of foam core that have been popped with a hole from the skewer, threaded on to your pipe cleaner. Uh, leave the space of about a pinky for me, um, or you could, you know, kind of fix it with just another space of a piece of foam core if you want to. Um, but get that done, and then I'm going to show you next step. Okay, here we're on to phase two. I have this all nicely threaded, and I've got the spacing. It doesn't have to be completely exact, completely on the money for each spacing, about a pinky length, like I said before. And the next thing you want to make sure you have on hand is paintbrush. And in this case, I am using Craft Smarts Olive Green. Um, this is the paint that I'm going to put on this whole entire piece. Reason being, you want to camouflage this a little bit. Now, it doesn't take a lot of paint, so I'm actually just going to use the cap to the bottle. So start painting away. You want to make sure you get all sides of the foam. And you also do want to paint that pipe cleaner. I like going it square, or not square, rectangle by rectangle. It's completely up to you how you want to paint this. The gist of the matter is, 
get this covered in the olive green paint from Craftsmart. Get that done, we'll go to the next step. All right, while I'm waiting for the pipe cleaner and foam to dry, we're gonna talk shop a little bit about some other supplies. Um, these are some lovely finds from Michaels. It's that plastic-based silk plant, but it comes in these little tufts once you start pulling it off. And this is what you're gonna use for making the hedge itself. You need to see the tag. There you go. Floral accents. Say it in French if you want to. It's the Ashland line. Uh, this one is called the Ma Moss Mat. Okay, pretty straightforward. Um, I definitely like this plastic based silk flower. It's very durable, holds up really well. So you want to get one of these and you're not going to use all of it. You can definitely use it for some other pieces. Um, the next thing you're going to want to make sure you have on hand for the next step is the, you do want it, the Gorilla Hot Glue Sticks. Uh, mini size for me because I'm using my mini glue gun. Um, but you do want to make sure you have this on hand because I find this attaches to the plastic florals a lot better than just traditional glue sticks. Um, and if you hear kids shouting in the background, the kids are outside playing. So that's what that is. Um, so these are the things you want to make sure you have ready and on the go specifically for this project to make sure it stays together because you want to make sure that happens. All right. All right. So my pipe cleaner and the foam pieces are dried, painted up with that olive green. I've already started working on the first rectangle in the line. And as you can see, I kind of have... Let's get this to focus a little bit better. Hello. All right. So here we have, ta-da. You can see I have three tufts. You have one dead center on the top and then one on either side in the upper corners of that rectangle. The last thing you're going to do is put one right, right there, right in the front uh, to mask the front portion of your foam's rectangle here. Um, so what you want to do, this is going to make it easier for you. You gather up that piece of plant, make sure you have a nice little stump thing going on here, and then just put it onto that hot glue and you're going to want to hold it steady until it has a chance to cool. You don't want to let this go too soon because then what happens is it's going to pop right off because these leaves are very springy. So this is a little bit more time intensive, but definitely wor worth it. And so I'm going to let this cool while my finger's holding it. And then I'll show you what you're going to start doing for the alternate alternate formula for how many of these tufts you keep putting on each rectangle. Stay okay, tuned. I'm free. So I'm not holding onto this tuft anymore so I can show you what's gonna happen. All right, so you have your four tufts on the first piece. Now here's where the formula is gonna kick in. Every other rectangle is going to get a different amount of tufts, but it's only every other. So this next one, I'm not gonna bother putting the side pieces on because look at this, this thing is full. This has body, if you will. Um, so really, I just want to find a fuller tuft, and there are ones that are a little bit more full than the others, like this one's, this one's nice. I like this one. So this one's going to go on the next rectangle down. See, it's already hiding. So you're going to put it just basically right at the tip top here, okay, where my thumbnail is. You're going to put a tuft right there. Once that's cool and done, what happens is you shift down to the next rectangle, and that gets tufted on the top and then a tuft on either of the two, on both, sorry, both of the two upper corners of that rectangle. So every other rectangle from here gets a tuft. Then we move to the next tuft, it's three tufts, top, upper corners, all right? So that's what you're gonna march down and do through all of these rectangles. I'm going to take care of doing this next one and the one after that so you can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna first put on this one, just the one tuft. Get a good dollop, hold it on there. And you might find with the top ones, it helps just to kind of go back and put a little bit of extra hot glue around to kind of give it a collar. Um, but again, you want to hold this in place until it cools down. Um, and then what I do is, since my hand's kind of stuck, I'm actually going to put a tuft on the next rectangle. And again, let's see if I can find a nice fluffy, guy. oh, you're nice. All right, so I'm going to put this guy onto the next one as well. And I'm just going to let these two guys chill out together. Uh, so once those two set, I'm going to show you how to put on the two side ones for the next rectangle. All right. Two top tufts are cooled. And you can kind of see the side view here. Focus. My camera's being a little temperamental today. Um, but as you can see, there's this second in. And what I'm going to start working on is this upper corner right up here on the one that you just finished putting the top tuft on. And so you're going to do a nice bit of glue. Upper corner, upper corner is important. If you put it too low, then you're actually going to start lifting up. 
your hedge base. Um, and then what I try and do is I try and find pieces that have more of a horizontal fullness as opposed to a top fullness. And you're going to just, again, same thing, tuck it onto that top corner and you want to hold this in place, let it cool. And once it's ready, let it go. Do this to your other corner as well. And then you'll shift down to the next rectangle and give that just one topped tucked. So march down your whole piece here, doing that alternating formula. And when you get to that end base, again, it's a tuft at the top, tuft at the two outer corners, and a tuft at the front base. Once you get that done and you let it cool completely, your hedge is going to be done. Finish product time. My hedge is cool. It's all set and ready. Um, so here's what the bottom of it looks like. All right. You can see all the different rectangles that have gone down that pipe cleaner. Um, you have that rough formula of every other rectangle gets so many tufts onto it. Um, and that, again, rough formula. If you have a spot that's looking a little sparse, then yeah, put another tuft in. You don't have to keep it exactly, exactly, exactly marching the same way down the line. Uh, you just want your end result to be this, nice and full, uh, and it will sit nicely again on your terrain, and then you can just manipulate, manipulate it, there's the word, manipulate it and shape it how you need it to be, how you want it to be. Um, and I'm excited to see how this is gonna work out because I'm definitely gonna be making a few more of these fun little flexible dudes. Um, so I hope, kids, so I hope this is something that you can put to use in your own terrain scapes and have fun with. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye. All right, Brian, this one's for you. Little inside joke time. Worked my magic today. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is our little inside joke. Brian thinks I have magic. I don't. Just, I have fun creating. So thanks again for watching. I hope these work out really well for you. Bye.